Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. In today's tip, I am going to show you how to find good search terms that, by using YouTube's auto search feature. I will also show you how to see which terms you are ranking for using TubeBuddy and I will explain why ranking number one for something can at times mean absolutely nothing. First, TubeBuddy. I will have a link for it down below in the description box and in the comments. It is absolutely free to use. There are other programs out there that will show you the same things TubeBuddy does. I use TubeBuddy. I'm sticking with TubeBuddy. So that's the one that I will be talking about. The first thing you want to do is use YouTube to see what people are searching for. And I will take you over to the computer to show you that. I'm going to use my quilt videos as an example. So let's just go on over. Let's say that I have just now started studying search terms for quilting. I actually know at this point which terms I want to use in my tags, which ones I'm ranking high on. But if you don't know yet, just start a search with the word quilt and stop and see what is populating on its own. This is telling you this is what people are searching for. Quilting, quilting for beginners, quilting tutorial, and so on. Use anything here that makes sense. For instance, for me, with the quilt block party, I could use quilting for beginners. I can use quilting tutorial, quilt as you go, could be used because these blocks could be turned into a quilt as you go project. So those are some of the terms that I would use. But now let's say there's a video that I'm uploading that is using the quilt as you go method, like my tote bag. I could click on quilt as you go. And now let's just hit the space bar and see what populates. And now this is going to give me other ideas. Quilt as you go joining blocks, quilt as you go blocks. I would totally use this. I could use without sashing. If I had sashing, I would use this. But you can see it's going to give you popular search terms. These are the terms you want to be using in your videos. I don't care what it is you look for. You can do the same steps. Now let's just look at quilt as you go for a second. Look who's on the first page. Me. Let's go down. Me again. Let's go down. Me, again. I have three videos on the front page. Now I'm going to show you, does that mean I'm really ranking? Or does it mean that YouTube knows my viewing history and is just showing my videos on the front page to me? Do remember, if you search for something and you're on the front page, it doesn't mean you are ranking. It can mean that YouTube is showing you according to your history what they think you want to see and it also could mean that you searched for something so um, exact that it's going to pull up that video and I'll explain that a little more in just a minute but let's go ahead and look at this video of mine which has almost 80,000 views now do notice what's here in the sidebar because I'll be talking about the sidebar in a bit now I'm going to go to tags, and this is where you need to, buddy. You can see quilt as you go. I am ranking in the third spot if I do a search for quilt as you go. Was it the third spot for me? Let's go see. Yes, it was. One, two, three. Now this will change at any given time. So by the time you're watching this, if you search for quilt as you go, I may no longer be in the third position. I could be down to number eight. But it's telling me that right now I am ranking for that. And I'm also ranking for quilt as you go tutorial, quilt as you go with sashing, quilt as you go placemats. I have no idea why that's even there. I think maybe, did I mention that it could be used for placemats? Or that I knew that quilters could use it for placemats? I can't remember, but at the time I felt that was an important one to put there how to quilt as you go. I'm also ranking for my name and obviously I would, I, I can't even believe that I'm not ranking number one for my own name. I should be ranking higher than 29th. <laughs> but this is what it's showing you. You will see that I do use other things that have nothing to do with the quilting and I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. 
let's just go back to the camera for right now. It's really good to spend some time finding out what people are searching for. You want search terms that make sense. When you find a search term that you think you want to use, go ahead and click through using that search term. For instance, quilt as you go. When I first researched quilt as you go, and I searched for that exact term, I looked at the videos that had popped up on that front page. I checked the titles and the tags of each of those videos because with TubeBuddy you can check anyone's tags. I discovered that only about the top seven of them actually used the term quilt as you go in the title and or the tags. The others had no mention of it in the tags. So I thought, if I put that in the tags, that's going to let YouTube know that I do indeed have a Quilt As You Go video, and it could bump me above those who are actually showing Quilt As You Go methods, but who didn't use it in their tags or even in their titles. YouTube is going to like my video better because it knows that I did my homework and that I used the good tags. And the very first video that I put out there using Quilt As You Go in the tags, I ranked for it. Now, anytime I do a quilting video, I am very careful with my tags, and I'm almost always ranking on the front page for a very common search term. That's what you want to do. You want to find good terms that people are actually searching for, but not a lot of competition. And that's how you find out if the competition is low. Do a search for that exact phrase. Do your homework. What are those top people using in their tags? If they're not using that term and you use the term, you stand a good chance of getting above them. I just want to stop and mention, you might be wondering, how come they're on the front page if they didn't use good tags? It's usually because they have a lot of views or a lot of subscribers or both. But if you use the tags with search terms that people are looking for, you can rank above the others. One thing that confuses people is sometimes they'll say, I'm ranking on the front page for this particular video. It could be that they are just searching for something similar. And like I said, YouTube knows your history. It's going to put things in front of your eyeballs that it thinks you want to see, like yourself. That doesn't mean you're ranking. A hundred strangers could search the exact same term as you searched and not see your videos there because they've never watched one of your videos yet. Once they start watching some of your videos, you will pop up on their screen because YouTube will say, oh, they probably would like to see that person's video even though you're not ranking. To know if you're actually ranking, you need a tool to show you if you're ranking, like TubeBuddy. If you go to TubeBuddy and you look at your tags and you see your ranking number one for something, again, don't get all excited about that. It could be that you're ranking for a term that absolutely no one is searching for. And there are times to use terms that no one is searching for, and I'll get there in a minute. For instance, if I were to use the term in my tags, quilt block party number 20, I'm going to rank first for that because I would probably be the only video on YouTube with that as a search term. So yes, I will rank number one, but absolutely no one is going to search for that exact phrase. So ranking number one for a phrase like that is absolutely meaningless. You want to rank on phrases that people are actually searching for. That's where auto search comes in handy and common sense. You know, just use common sense. What would you use to search for a certain video? You're not going to search for something so specific. But it is good to nail things down, like quilt as you go. I never knew about Q-A-Y-G, but I do use that now in my titles and tags because that is something that, although not a lot of people are searching for it, there are enough quilters who know to search for that. And if they search for it, they're going to find me because there's not a lot of competition with that. So it is good to narrow it down, but again, only if there are people out there actually searching for something. So let me just go through a few do's and don'ts. Do use terms people are searching for. That speaks for itself. Do include things like your channel name, your town, 
certain catchphrases that you use. For instance, my channel name is Darlene Michaud. I put that, I try to put it, unless I really need room for another tag, I put that in all my tags because that lets YouTube know, oh, what do we show in the sidebar? Let's show other videos that have Darlene Misho in the tags. Or let's show other videos for Sanford, Maine. You want things that are going to tie in together. You should always have your city or town because there are a lot of people who are just curious as to who is a YouTuber in their area. And if they search for your town, you will probably get seen. I use certain things like hot alert peanut gallery. These are terms I use often. So if I say hot alert in a video and I have room to put that in the tags, I use it because again, that lets YouTube know. Let's put some other videos in the sidebar where Darlene used hot alert in the tags. I don't expect anybody to ever be searching for the term hot alert, but I put it there because I want YouTube to know what is connected in my library of videos. Do include single word tags. You won't ever rank for them. Like I use the word quilt. I am probably not going to ever rank for the word quilt because there is tons of competition above me with the word quilt in the tags. But I do use it because again, I want YouTube to know this is a video about a quilt or quilting or things like that. I do use single word terms as fillers. I try to do the search terms, the phrases first, and then I'll throw in all kinds of tags to, to fill up my 500 characters. We're allowed 500 characters in the tags. TubeBuddy keeps track of that as you're typing them. It lets you know how many you have used. I try to use every character that I can. If I have three characters left, I'll type in DIY. I just want as many tags in there as possible. But I don't want tags that have nothing to do with the video. Do include videos that are similar to yours, like if you mention Missouri Star Quilt Company. Use that in the tags. That doesn't only help you, but it helps them. They like knowing that people have tagged them in the tags. It makes them more popular too. That's pretty much all I want to tell you at this point. Just do your homework, see what people are searching for, and then check your rankings often. If you see that you're ranking high for common sense searchable terms, not things like the exact title of your video. I did want to mention that. I was in a group once and these people were raving because they would type the exact title of their video in the search bar and their video would come up on number one spot and they're like, oh my god, I'm ranking number one. Yeah, you're ranking number one for your exact title. That means nothing. It just means that you searched for that exact title and since there was no other video on YouTube with that exact title, you made it to the number one spot. I know a lot of people will copy their exact title. I do it sometimes only if my title has all good keywords. But if your title says, check out my new quilt block, I'm not going to put that in the keywords. Nobody is going to be searching for a quilt block by typing in the words, check out my new quilt block. So again, it's common sense. What words would you use to search? Those are the kind of words you want in your tags. And just because you put in your exact title does not mean that you are ranking. It just means YouTube was smart enough to show you exactly what you wanted to see because you used those exact words. Check your rankings often. When I upload a quilt video and other videos too, but I'm just really starting to rock the world with the quilting. There are a lot of terms now that I'm using that I'm ranking in at least the top 10 for. So obviously I want to use those terms if they make sense for a particular video, I want to use those terms again, those tags again. Oh, and TubeBuddy makes it easy to just copy your tags and paste them. You can copy tags from anybody's video and paste them. Delete the ones that don't make sense for your particular video. Again, don't get confused with if they're ranking number one for something bizarre that no one's ever going to search for, ignore that tag. You don't want to rank for something that nobody is searching for. It's absolute wasted space. 
but when you do have something that is ranking good, like my quilt videos are doing for me, that's a sign to keep doing more of the same. Do something where you can use those same tags and keywords and it will let you dominate a section of YouTube. So I hope this helped and uh, let me know if it did. And TubeBuddy, it's awesome. You've got to use it. And like I said, the link is down below in the description box and also in the comments. So that's it for now. I'll be back with more soon. Bye. I know recording videos and editing and uploading all takes a long time, but if you're serious about your channel, you want to invest a little bit more time doing research on tags. If you don't follow through with that step, then all the time you spent recording, editing, and uploading is wasted time.